This is USBI News, your Virgin Islands connection. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us for USBI News. I'm Emily Matson. It appears as if the Delta variant continues to fuel an increase in COVID-19 cases here in the Virgin Islands. We are seeing a significant spike right now. In fact, the positive cases of COVID-19 we're seeing right now in the territory are the highest they've ever been. Our USBI News, Ali Bourne-Vanek has more on this latest spike and what government leaders have to say about it. Emily, the number of COVID cases in the territory has gone up again. We've now seen this happen for several consecutive weeks. And according to the Department of Health, it's the highest it's ever been. The numbers are the following. 336 active cases in total, 121 on St. Croix, 201 on St. Thomas, and 14 on St. John. The COVID rate has gone up to 5.48%, and there are a total of 40 deaths. The Commissioner of Health calls these numbers daunting. We have come so far. And so this figure is truly daunting and somewhat frightening for those who have not taken the public health warnings seriously. 4,584 cases have recovered and unfortunately there have been 40 fatalities. And when I say that you have not taken or many of you haven't taken the public war health warnings seriously, I mean that you tend to take it more seriously when those of you or around you are affected by COVID-19. 40 family members have actually been severely affected through death. Do not allow that to happen to you. This is still a serious time in the territory. You know, for the last month, it has been extremely uh, stressful in the territory. I know for you and certainly here at Government House where we have to make the decisions. Um, it started with the surge that happened in the BVI and over uh, 1,500 cases being accumulated there and so many people passing away. And then, of course, we got our share of it um, in terms of the surge that we are experiencing now, which I must say we are, we are handling quite well considering the, um, the veracity, is a good word, of the, the Delta variant and how quickly this contagion moves through our community. And, you know, I just want to make sure that people uh, – understand that everybody's stressed out. I mean, uh, my brother this weekend, I think he sent out like a hundred different Facebook posts about why you should get a vaccine. And you know why? Because he's the paramedic that comes to pick people up um, when they can't breathe. And um, the stuff that they've been going through and, and what you have to do, all the stuff you have to put on, the protective gear, you know, it's, it's like w one ambulance run takes a couple of hours because then you got to decontaminate after it. And even with the stuff that we're bringing on, you know, our healthcare workers at the hospital, our EMTs, you know, our paramedics, our general practitioners, our respiratory therapists, these, these people are tired and we're tired too. As always, the Department of Health and Government House are encouraging everybody to social distance and stay as safe as possible. And shifting gears, the governor also mentioned to stay safe Tuesday as the territory is expected to see some flash flooding due to a system that's moving through our islands. In St. Thomas, Ali Bourne-Vanek. USVI News. Lots of information coming out of Monday's Government House News Conference. Ali, thank you so much for that report. Meantime, dozens of protesters took to the streets on Monday, taking a stand against a COVID vaccine mandate at the University of the Virgin Islands. UVI is currently requiring its students and employees to be vaccinated. The protesters say they're not anti-vaccine, but want people to have a choice, especially because a COVID vaccine right now is currently not fully FDA approved. They support working together, like having increased testing to make things safer. They also have concerns because they say some exemptions to the mandate due to health or religious reasons have been denied. This protest is about gaining community support so that hopefully we can enact a bill that will stop the Board of Trustees from having a vaccine mandate. We feel that it's unfair to several people, and it's also unfair how they've been denying all of our exemptions, religious and medical exemptions. We really believe that everyone deserves a choice up to whether or not they should get vaccinated, and we should respect that choice without taking away people's jobs or their right to a quality education. 
All right, make sure you stay tuned to USBI News throughout the week. We're going to have much more from those protests Monday in St. Thomas coming up a little bit later this week. And as the surge of new COVID infections continues, more than 66,000 Americans are in hospitals across the country right now, with many facilities again running short on beds and staff. And many communities are returning to some of the sanctions and precautions from the height of the pandemic. As the number of new cases, more than 100,000 a day, continue to climb, so do concerns. The pandemic is not over. Far from it. The current surge, doctors say, fueled by the highly contagious Delta variant. Delta is doubly infectious, and it's also deadlier because more people become ill. Hospitals quickly running out of space. In Austin, a city of more than 2 million, there were only six ICU beds available to start the week. It affects everyone. It affects our management and our ability to care for everyone, not just COVID patients. So it's very stressful. Now, as schools begin to open across the country, many worry things could get even worse. A growing number of communities are returning to mask mandates, even for fully vaccinated residents. The surge striking a sour note in New Orleans, where organizers have canceled the Jazz and Heritage Festival for the second year in a row, while Grammy winner Jason Isbell says he'll require fans to wear masks and provide proof of vaccination or a negative COVID test at his concerts. It's been a long time since we've been able to go uh, into places and play shows for people, and I don't think that's going to last very long unless we do it carefully. Caution. Dr. Stress could be the difference between life and death. And again, as you know, that mask mandate has remained in effect here in the Virgin Islands, so not much change um, as far as that goes here in the territory. A federal judge has granted Norwegian Cruise Line's request to temporarily block a Florida law banning cruise companies from asking passengers for proof of coronavirus vaccination before they board a ship. A U.S. district judge granted the preliminary injunction in a lawsuit challenging the state's vaccine passport ban, which was signed into law in May by Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. The state's attorney has said the laws aim to prevent discrimination against passengers who don't get vaccinated. Norwegian says vaccine proof is needed, though, to safely resume its cruises. A Norwegian cruise is set to depart from Miami on August 15th. It will be the company's first voyage from Florida since the pandemic halted its operations last year.